Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the Fish Locker out on a boat. Out for another stunning Cornish summer day. Yeah, it's sloppy, it's windy, and it's rainy. And I'm out to go and do me pots. Let's go. Christ on a bike. <sighs> Combination of lots of weed on the ropes, a strong tide and wind. Now that one wasn't easy. Combination there of lots of weed on the ropes, a strong tide, and we're drifting now at 1.9 knots, that's because we've got wind and tide together. But the last little bit of the tide, I wanted to get these done and get, <laughs> get back in before the weather gets bad. But yeah, that was hard work. Before anybody says anything about having a hauler, a hauler would do absolutely zero good in a situation like that. <sighs> Got a bit of cannibalism in that pot. An undersized male brown edible crab. Covered in keel worms, this guy, he's been in his shell a long time, but he's he's about two centimetres too small. Another undersized. This lady, this lady is big enough. She's got no claws. Now there aren't any claws in this pot, and those are well healed up. She'll grow them back. She's probably gonna shed her shell quite soon to grow them back. It does possibly look like she's got an old V-notch in her. There, that mark. V-notches, I've covered this in quite a few other videos. V-notches are a mark you can put in some of the tail fans to protect a, preg to protect a pregnant or breeding female lobster. And after two or three seasons, they do grow out. This one looks like it might have had one in there before. Yeah, like I say, she's big enough to keep, but she's got no claws. The claws are half the meat. I can only take two per day. So let her let her go back. This guy on the other hand, he's well over minimum. And he got two big claws. So I'm keeping you mate. Another undersized brown edible. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's maybe just worth measuring. I'll put him down in a bucket and I'll measure him after I finish his plate. Got quite a lot of growth on these pots now, can you see this? Slightly undersized. Minimum landing size in my area is 90 millimeters. This guy's probably going to be about 87. 86. Undersized. 
and another undersized but actually these guys these guys have eaten an even smaller one yeah. look an empty shell these two have been been munching on him flock of gannets Undersized male spider crab. In fact, we've got a few spiders in this one. Another little lobster, a little male lobster. He's well undersized. Stone. Yeah, this one's picked up a couple of spiders. You notice how this one's much redder than this one. It's just colour variation in the same species. Another slightly undersized male brown edible crab. Yeah, he'll be about two centimeters under. You measure them across the back. And a baby, baby lobster. So yeah, one keeper lobster out with his fleet. I'm looking around because we are drifting quite fast. We are still drifting at 1.7 knots. And that's just because of this wind. Oh, I get these pots rebaited and shot back. Now people keep asking me, saying how would you bait your pots? These pots are baited because these have a bait bag in there. So you can put soft baits like uh, salted mackerel, that type of thing inside those bags. My other pot, this, this pot here, this needs harder baits because you bait the entrance. I'll get them rebaited, I'll sort the ropes out and we'll shoot them back. Tidy down and get the next ones. Just under. Minimum landing size for brown edibles, males is 160, females is 150. Better luck next time. Got him. Let's get these ropes out from underneath my feet. Have 10 seconds to myself. <laughs> and we'll see what's in these pots. <sighs> we're bang on slack water now. I plan when I'm coming out to do my pots. I do them over slack water. These were in quite deep water. The first ones were still a bit of tide running, which is why I had so much trouble with them. 
These ones were slightly easier because there wasn't as much tide, just the wind to contend with. Now these ones actually, I have shot these on a new piece of ground and it hasn't worked. This was this was like a pinnacle of piece of rock right in the middle of a lot of sand and it's just, it's not really done the business. Well you've got to experiment. I can tell there's not an awful lot down there just because there's still loads in the bit. Right. Now this one here I think I've V-notched that one before in the past. Yeah, this girl, if I check back through my videos, I think I'm gonna V-notch this one, like in the last month or two, because I think I remember seeing that deformed V-notch there. But she's also, at some point in time, she's lost both of those claws and she's growing them back. Now these marks here in her tail, that denotes that at some point in time she's had eggs when someone's caught so she's a known breeder they might protect her now for the next three or four years that that there that's what it looks like when it's been v-notched and it grows out take a photo of you and a little spider crop you can't you can't keep a V-notched lobster. Oh. I'll just take a photo of it and let her go. Come on. Now this one was just Crab City. All of them undersized. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And an undersized male lobster. Yeah, well undersized. So the pot's caught, the pot's fished well. There was just nothing on the ground. Just like I say, the bait bags have still got plenty of bait in and there was stuff in the pots, they're just small. You never know, someone might have just worked that ground just before I put the pots there. I don't work my gear in the same area all the time because you just end up fishing the ground out you just end up depleting the ground so I move them around everywhere in the space of maybe like a half a mile to a three quarters of a mile square now there is uh, there is no set areas where you're allowed to work and where you aren't like nobody owns a certain bit of ground but because I'm only doing this recreationally because I'm only doing this for my pleasure and there are other fishermen, there are commercial fishermen who do it for a living. You just stay out of their way. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to tell anyone what they can and can't do, but it's probably in your best interest if you stay out of their way. So I'll try and find little areas where they don't work and I'll keep to those spots. Undersized lobster. Ow, 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 let go, let go. Luckily it's just the end of my glove. Don't really want to put a hole in my glove though. Now people say that if you hold down one claw, that they release the other. There you go. Freshen up these baits, sort the ropes out. Get these pots shot back somewhere else. There you are. See you later. What a lazy girl. <laughs>
clean down, let's get the last ones. It's getting a little bit wet in it. Nice lobster in that pot. Yeah. <laughs> I do, I put my first pot is always a really heavy one. I do that to, to make sure that the pots don't creep. So that the tide and the wind dragging on the boy in a rope doesn't pull the pots around. When that one gets stuck, it is a real chew. Like what I have in there. I do enjoy the effort. I enjoy the work of doing this. Let's go. Oh, All right, you come. No. Undersized. I've only got one claw as well. That is a stunner of a lobster. <laughs> Don't know how well you can see them there. She has been V notched last year. There and there. This one shouldn't be a V-notch, you don't V-notch in the centre, but quite likely I've V-notched her in the past, because I always V-notch both. Could have been somebody else, could have been me. But yeah, that is what it looks like when a V-notch grows out. She still counts as a V-notch and I'm going to renew these two. Rather than keep her, she is an absolute stunner of a lobster. That is a monster. This girl here, She could produce 20,000 eggs per brood. And these v notch will take two or three seasons to grow out. So technically she could produce up to 60,000 eggs in the time that she's predicted. Now, that might seem like an awful lot of eggs, it is. But in the wild, they don't have a very good success rate. It's something like 1% would reach this size from them 20,000. Just done it. Yeah, definitely gonna get some photos of her. That's that's really good to see. It shows as well that V-notching them, it doesn't harm them, it doesn't stop them from doing what they want to do. Yeah, she's perfectly healthy. So that's two V-notches we've had today. It shows that there's quite a few on the ground, doesn't it? It's not just myself that does it. There are, there are other commercial fishermen that do it as well. There's recreational fishing, I imagine, that do it too. Um, and to enforce it, like to stop me from bringing that one in, there are fisheries officers that go around inspecting people. They come out and inspect people at sea, they, they board boats at sea, and also they board boats like when they're landing. They catch people as they're in the car park and stuff like that. Nice looking lobster. White and orange. Undersized though. Full of vigour. Full of spunk, that little lad. He's got a lot of weight in him. I'll uh, show you in comparison. Got a couple of crabs back in there as well.
Got a velvet and a brown edible. Having a scrap. He's really clean. He's been in his shell not very long. Ah, oh, this guy might, might be big enough. No, 88. Yeah, too small. It means today that I'm going home with just one lobster, but I don't mind that. To show you the difference, what I was meaning about how much white he's got is. <laughs> yeah, look how angry this one is. He's, he's after it with them claws. Whereas this one, there's maybe something to be said in this, and this is a male and this is a female. She's just. Whereas he's all about all about that thug life isn't it? Yeah look how much white don't be don't be a nuisance. Look how much white he's got in his claws to how much white she's got in hers. And how much white there is in his body compared to hers. Also worth noting is there's two types of claws. There is generally a larger one, which is a crusher claw. That is what's used to get all the prey and kill it. And this one is a little fast serrated one. This guy has got the crusher on the left. This girl has got the crusher on the right. So we have a right-handed and left-handed lobster. Both of them undersized though, unfortunately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my V-notching clippers and I'm going to renew those V-notches. Look, that's what they look like when they're brand new, and that's what they look like when they're growing out. I'm trying to do you a favour, love. Stop. I have to be careful here because if you get hold of my finger I'll regret it. There we go. Yeah look. That's a new one, that's an old one. She's also at some point in time she's taken some damage on the end of this claw. Drop her back. That is a stunner of a lobster, isn't it? There's those new V notches. She's going to be a really lazy one, she's not going to flap. She's just going to drop, aren't you? You going? See you later. Got some rain coming. Let's get these pots sorted, shot back, and let's get back inside. There we go. I have got a lot of cleaning down to do. Now, we did only manage one keeper today, but I'm happy enough with that. Go back now and me and James will have that for dinner. Just go, oh, that's, that's interesting actually. This shows to show all the bait that we've had in the pot here. That's little tiny lice. 
See them all? That's what's been eating all the bait in the bags. So some of the areas you put them, I put, put water on the edge of a piece of sand. Just didn't fish very well because you just have vermin like this in the pots. I hope you enjoyed joining me. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.